we would like to introduce our story focusing on Schwann self accusers representing a neuro crest like state with biased multipotency. Hello everyone, my name is Igor Adameko and I'm a senior author on this story and I'm going to tell you why we started this research, what was the major idea behind doing all these experiments. So, as you know, in the vertebrate body, actually in the vertebrate embryonic body, there are specific uh, multipotent cells that are called neurocrest cells. They are bored at the dorsal neurotube area and they will migrate everywhere in the body uh, like this, and they will give rise to many different cell types because they are multipotent. However, part of these cells will actually jump on the nerves, right, on the developing peripheral nerves. So they will associate themselves with neural projections innervating in the organ, skin, and other body parts, and they will retain a part of the original neurocrest multipotency, so they will be able to be recruited from this nerve and to give rise to chromatin cells of adrenal gland that release adrenaline, or for example, or parasympathetic neurons or pigment cells. So these cells also exercise some interesting multipotency. And we wanted to know, are those cells neurocrest that is associated with the nerve, or there are some other cells that are just retaining these multiples and how multipotency works in general. And to answer that question, we perform single cell transcriptomics. So we really decided to sequence these cells one by one. And now uh, our lead author, Louis Faure, will tell you how it works. So how are we doing single cell RNA sequencing? We are first gathering the cells in our embryos from different locations and different type points. And we basically uh, re um, extract the RNA content from them. And by applying uh, statistical uh, tools and analysis, we are able to plot them uh, in two dimensions, where cells that are uh, closely located are closely related to scriptonality. And so by, uh, by aligning the cells, uh, thanks to their similarity, we are able to uh, recover a tree structure, which was expected. And uh, this tree is composed of the neural crest cell that you can see in red. And uh, you can, what you can see also is that the neural crest cells, they converge into uh, a common uh, transcriptional state. And we call this uh, the um, hub state, basically. And this hub state uh, retains the multipotency, which it inherits from this converging red neural crest. So this hub state is represented by the cells that are nerve associated. So they're multipotent, nerve associated, they inherit the state, the transcriptional state from the crest, and they show the presence of transcriptional programs that start to direct them to different other states. So this is a microheterogeneous biased population of cells, which is very interesting because they live in the nerves. And this is our major discovery. And now another leading author of our story, Marie Eleni Castriti, will tell you our major conclusions. The hub is characterized by a specific gene expression program. Among those genes, we identified SOX8, integrin alpha 4, and serpin 2. We validated those genes experimentally by in situ hybridization, and we further identified SOX8 as a key transcriptional factor in phase determination on knock nerves using a knockdown experiment in the developing chicken embryo. We then analyzed the mode of cell fate decisions along the peripheral nerves and its functional precursors, and we found that this takes place through a concerted three step mechanism. First, this mechanism is initiated through coactivation of the two opposing gene modules, the subsequent repulsion, and lastly, fate commitment. Last but not least, we identified the transcriptional and profile of the developing neuromuscular traction glia, which is a great resource to the community. Taken together, our results are examining the Svansson precursor multipotency under a new light.